In this tutorial, we'll learn how to take several photos of the same scene, taken at different horizontal angles, and assemble them into one panoramic image. When taking shots that will be turned into a panorama, it's best to make use of a tripod. For the first example, I'm using four photos of a beach scene with a few boats. I'm starting with PaintShop Pro in the Edit workspace. I'm opening my Organizer palette, browsing in the navigation to find the images, and here they are. I'm selecting all four by pressing Shift and clicking them all, and dragging them into the editor. Now I'm clicking the push pins for the navigation and organizer to minimize them for now. I'm choosing Window, Tile Horizontally, so that I can see all four photos at once. Then I'll scroll my mouse wheel down to zoom out each image, all to the same size, and I'll arrange them in the order in which they should appear in the final panorama. These four photos will be brought into a blank canvas that's set to have dimensions that will work for the final panorama. To start a new empty image, choose File New, or press Ctrl N, or click this icon. Here you'll notice a large number of preset groups, and each group has a number of different sizes. For this project, I'm going to create a new image that has a size different than the standard ones listed here. I'll set a size that I think should work. I'll make sure that my units are set to inches, and to be safe, I'll make it 40 inches wide by 10 inches tall. It's okay if the size is too big, it can be trimmed after the images are placed and merged. I want to save this as a new preset, so I'm clicking the plus icon and naming this new preset Panorama Large. I'm clicking OK to bring in this new canvas. Now let's see if this canvas is a good size. I'm selecting the first image to make its layer active, then dragging that layer from the Layers palette directly onto the canvas. This image fits nicely inside with a border that can be trimmed away later. By default, images brought in this way are placed in the center of the canvas. To move this image all the way to the left, I'm clicking the Pick tool and sliding the image over. Now let's bring in the second image. I'm making this one active and dragging its layer onto the canvas. Pick is already active, so I can just slide it over. Let's do the same for the third and fourth images. The panorama canvas now has five layers, its own blank background plus the four imported images. Now I want to work on lining up the second image against the first, so that there will be a seamless border between them. I'm still in the Pick tool and selecting the second image so that I can see which layer it's on. Now I'm going to reduce the opacity of this layer. I can carefully drag the second layer over the first, referencing parts of the boats for a general alignment. I can fine-tune the image placement by adjusting the position X and position Y values, or by using my arrow keys to nudge the image into place. A single tap on an arrow key will move the image one pixel, Control plus the arrow will move it 10 pixels, and Shift plus the arrow will move it 50 pixels. Once in place, I'll zoom out and bring back the opacity of the second image. The rest of the panorama is done the same way. I'm bringing the third image over the second, reducing its opacity, and lining up objects. And doing the same for the fourth. Here's my final result with all four images opaque and lined up neatly in one long row. To remove the parts of the canvas I don't need, I'm first going to select what I want to keep and crop out the rest. I'll show two cropping techniques. First, I'll use the Crop tool. I'm using the freeform option, dragging the corners to set the borders, and clicking the check mark to implement. For another method, I'm going back to the uncropped image by pressing Ctrl Z for undo. This time I'm using the selection tool and dragging a rectangle to enclose what I want to keep. Then I choose image crop to selection. Lastly, I can merge all of these separate layers into one 
by right-clicking on any layer and choosing Merge, Merge All. Now the image is ready to be saved. This example was pretty straightforward. The objects in this panorama have clear edges and well-defined objects. But sometimes it's not so clear where images line up. Take this example of a mountain lake scene. I can create my new canvas by creating a new image, and my panorama large canvas is there in my user preset category. Instead of dragging layers into the canvas, here's another way. I'm selecting the first image and pressing Ctrl C to copy it. Then I select the canvas, and to paste the copied image as a new layer, I can use Ctrl V or Ctrl L. Each new layer is added just as before. The first and second images are easy to line up by using the background mountains. The second and third actually have some good reference objects as well, but what if your images don't? I'm doing my best by lining them up like this. Even though we could have lined up the mountains in the background, let's say we didn't and ended up with a visible seam like this. I could either take the time to align images again, or I can go to the Eraser tool. I'm adjusting the brush size to be pretty small by dragging the mouse while holding the Alt key. Then I just drag the mouse slowly and carefully along the seam and along any other areas that need correcting until the seam is impossible to detect. After zooming out, nothing looks amiss. Now I can flatten layers, select, crop, and I'm done. This brings us to the end of this panorama tutorial. To see other PaintShop Pro tools in action, check out our Discovery Center at learn.corel.com. And if you found this tutorial on YouTube while searching for training content, you can find many more video and written tutorials at the Discovery Center, again at learn.corel.com. Yeah.